Therefore, in the previous lecture, we constructed a tic-tac-toe game and added a chat window for debugging. Now, let's head to the chat room where debugging is being explained. The process of debugging is finding and correcting flaws and errors in software code. Debugging is the process of fixing errors whenever they appear in any program. Debugging includes various methods like print commands, debugging instruments, code logging, and views debugging by omission. Let's see what happens when we display values, variables, and check the execution flow. Developers frequently place print statements at key spots in their code to confirm unexpected behavior or values. By printing statements, they can validate the code and inspect the results, spotting anomalous behavior or inaccurate values, and appropriately printing the statements if any values are erroneous. Another person viewing the code may spot hazards that the original developer overlooked. Fresh perspectives can often provide valuable insights into potential issues. So, first we will generate a full bubble sort source code using JavaScript. Now, we will convert this code into C++. Let's see the equivalent code for bubble sort in C++. I've removed the swap element from my code to find the error and resolve it. Now that the swap statement has been removed from the code I provided, let's examine it. I deleted the swap statement from the code I provided, and this is what it informed us. Express regret for the faulty coding. It appears that the provided code lacks the swap logic. As a result, it created the function again and explained it to us. Now that it has informed us of the problem, it has also created the function for us and pointed out the error. If I paste the code now, removing the semicolon and add any minor errors, we can see how the problem is solved. Let's see what happens once I repeat it again. Therefore, I eliminated the length and semicolon from this sentence, and ChatGPT explains it to us well. It informs us which paraphrases are lacking. We were also instructed to eliminate the loop condition. As a result, here with proper documentation and explanation, ChatGPT gives us all the information so that we don't encounter any challenges when creating our code. This is how ChatGPT works. We received many letters claiming that we can create any code from ChatGPT and that this is very special software for any student who is at the beginning level or is learning programming or does not know much. They can learn using ChatGPT with sufficient documentation. However, there are a lot of websites and resources available currently. Therefore, if we rely solely on those materials, a novice cannot learn programming. Now that we have reached the next stage, let's begin a new part about frameworks. In this article, we'll discuss a few frameworks that are popular and commonly used with ChatGPT and JavaScript component frameworks. Among the many available options, React.js and Angular currently lead the pack. Although Vue.js is also extremely popular, React largely fills the market gap. So, utilizing ChatGPT, we'll start working with React.js. Let's start by opening a new chat and asking ChatGPT about React.js. When it comes to developing with React Native, I'm not sure. Let's ask ChatGPT to provide an overview of React.js. What is it? According to ChatGPT, React.js is a user interface toolkit built on JavaScript and created by Facebook in 2013. It enables the creation of reusable components, meaning that any components we construct using the framework can be used in various parts of our application. I'll now launch this website. Now what does single page application mean? Currently I'm on the website's homepage and I want to visit the service page. I'm now on the service page. You can see that the loading has taken place. However, it appears that this website was not created using React. WordPress powers React. Therefore, we will have to find another website built with React.js. There are many websites available if we type here. Let's visit the first website. This website is built using React. As a result, scrolling occurs if I visit the marketing platform's registration advertising. I have the extension downloaded here. The main benefit of this extension is that it allows us to obtain information about any website, including its use of frameworks, payment gateways, CDNs, web servers, and other details. This extension is called Weblizer, and it allows us to obtain this information. Everything that is used is displayed here, such as unpackaged, PHP, Stratamic, Facebook Pixel, qualified, and Emotion. But as you can see, we are not seeing any React-related elements here. Since Emotion is based on JS rather than React.js, the website I was trying to access is not available. 
and as a result we are now on the product page. I don't notice any loading when I visit the team page. Why? Because React.js was used to develop this website. I want to clarify that this is an instance of a single page website and there is no UI refresh visible. Next, we'll proceed to install React.js and start building applications. It is free and open source. I asked ChatGPT how to construct projects and what I need to install React OS. It provided clear instructions. First, we need to install npm and node.js. And then we can start a new project. Now that everything is being explained in detail step by step, we can begin using dev.js for production. As you can see, ChatGPT's speed is currently declining due to increased website usage, and the generation may take more time. However, we'll continue with the six stages to launch React.js in the next lecture. Since explaining React Native in detail would require a lengthy lecture, we will examine how to develop React.js and launch its production in Jet Drift in the upcoming lecture. In this lecture, we will go through six steps to install React.js. We need to follow those steps to install React OS properly. The first step is to install Node and NPM. If you haven't installed Node and NPM yet, you have to install the LTS version, as the current version does not have all the features due to being in production. The LTS version provides long-term support. The short-term program is CRAN. If you are a Windows user like me, or a Linux or Mac user. Either way, what you have to do is press the Windows key plus R to open the Run dialog. Type and press Enter to open Command Prompt. Run these two commands, Node minus V. I have Node because its version is 18.14.2 and here the version is 18.16. The last one didn't have that many digits. The first two digits matter the most, while the rest are minor details. If you are not getting the version details, then you have to install npm properly as told earlier. Most of the npms are automatically installed. If you don't have it, you can install it yourself. Moving on to the second step, let's create a new React project. You can create a project using two methods, directly through the or by pasting the npm project here. Here the main thing is when we start the building and I will be using this project in my chat GPT folder. So, if I have to provide this source code, I will copy this code and provide it there. The first command we have is this one. Open the terminal and paste the command. And it has started again. I will clear it. So, here we have an mpx. And the second one is create react native. So this is our app. The third one is the name of our app. Here it is written my react project, but you can change it and use any name. I will open the terminal again. I will use the command mpx create react app and the name of the app. I have created this folder named my app. That means the name of my file will be my app and it will install react app. Let's start the installation. Here you can see a folder is created with my impeccable letters and everything is installed. It's just simply running the internet thread to see the speed of the internet. You have to remember that everything is installed in react app through the internet. Here, our app is fully installed. Now we have to start it. Here, all the npm installations are in there. npm start, the development server, npm run build, build the app into static files, production, everything's in there. And we suggest that you begin that by typing cd my app npm start. Now, we will go to VS Code and select cd my app. In the folder of chat GPT, there is my app. After selecting my app, I will start npm start stop. By starting npm, our application will start on a local server and be uploaded. We will get the link of that server and use it and run it on our browser or any browser. Simply copy the link and paste it into your browser to see the Reactor app in action. This file is running. Now we have to finish the React Native app and try to do everything with a script, i.e. In our last lecture, we learned how to do a full installation of a React app. The installation process was completed successfully and we even ran it on our browser by opening the localhost website. However, 
I encountered an issue with the app not displaying as expected, possibly because I used the app in the beginning. So, this is our process. Now we are going to work on React as a beginner. As I am relatively new to coding, I want to create a chat GPT based component, React app. I don't know how to work on React, so I did not get the same answer as expected, but chat GPT gave a very relatable answer. To recap, we have installed Node and NPM, and we also have a text editor. We have also created the application and learned about React's developer tools. Understanding the tools in React is essential, including concepts like React components, state, props, and performance. First of all, we need components, which ChatGPT told us about. Then it has told us about some additional libraries in which the top of the list is React Router. Since whatever routing is done, it is done through React Router. We also discussed back-end APIs, which are not the concern of front-end developers. ChatGPT have told us about components, state, strokes, and performance. We need to know these three things. First of all, let's ask it how to create components in React for VS. In React.js, here are the JSX and JS extension. The difference between them is that JSX is an extension of JavaScript that allows us to write JavaScript code in an HTML-like syntax, making it easier to integrate with React, whereas JS is a programming language. Whenever we do work in JavaScript, it finds the engine in the web browser and gives us a response. This doesn't mean that if you use JSX, you won't be able to use JavaScript, or vice versa. These two are the same concept. You can use whichever. However, I use JS in some projects and JSX in some. There is no issues in this. Now, ChatGPT told us how to create components and also give us some examples on how to create components and extend them, like importing the components. Thus, we will do the same process. Let me zoom out a little so that we can see clearly. Now, I will go to my code. The first thing we have to do is make a components folder. Once I have made the folder, I will create some components in the folder and name it as form.jsx or jsx. When I add jsx, the icon coming up is React, but when I use JS, the icon of JavaScript is coming up. We have three files. Now we will add code in these three components called home, about, and sign up. In react.js, after that, ChatGPT gave us an example and told us how we can import the components and use them. Why is it necessary to import? Because if I am checking on the browser, my app is being used here. Now, the app is being used here, app.js, this one. So, if I delete the import app from here and go to the browser, we will get the error that the app is not defined, since all of the components are on the app. You can change the name of the app, but this name is preferred because we make applications for every app. I will reset the browser. This has reduced the error. If I view the browser, the application is back to normal. Now we have to add the code in the form of home, login, and sign up. I will go to 4GB and copy the code. First, we have the home code. Let's copy it. Now, I have to change the name of the site. I will change it one time only. Now, I have added the sign up component. We should check the app to see if everything's working as expected. However, it seems that our app.js file is missing the necessary imports for the components. We have to import them correctly to use them. If I remove this app and just return here, we can then import these components. Now, we have to import the home pod. In the last lecture, we created some components and styled them. Now, we are going to see how we can create routes in React. As mentioned in the previous lecture, we can create different pages. Now we have to install React Router DOM, and we are using a browser router, so we will install both npm packages. Here, we have to install npm, which is npm install React Router 2, and also we have to install browser router, which npm has provided us. Please note that the information provided is based on the latest data available until September 2021. Keep in mind that React and React Router might have received updates beyond that date. The latest version of React is not working. It has added a switch. We add a root. Browser router is fine. We can use callback function as a variable. We have to do some advanced enchantment. 
If you copy and paste the code properly, it won't work. We have to do the code by ourselves. I'm modifying the code by myself. First of all, you have to download a browser router. If I go to browser, router, npm, and you have to install npm. Copy it and paste it in the terminal. After that, the second npm in the terminal is npm install react router.org. Install. We have successfully installed our latest npm. Now, we have to use browser router or we have to use the app.jsx. Copy this photo and paste it here. Now you can see that the link is installed. Here you have to add a path first so that our default page will be home. When we click any other path, then it will be the path's name. Here we will add an element. Now go to the element tab and select the element. Also you will add copy here and get sign up here. Now you will also add sign up after adding like this. Now we have to add a router. Actually, we have used both routers, but we have not installed the router. Here, we got a warning that the router is not defined and never used. Thus, we have to add the router here. Ensure that you import the link component and the components for home, login and sign up. The exact attribute ensures that the route matches exactly with the specified path. How do you add a link? We just have to use tools and have to define what is our home path, which is just a slash. Now I have to copy this link and use it in login. Also, we have to import the file from the file folder. Again, it will come up in the sign up. And here we have to insert the import link, which is typed. After importing it, we have to take it here and sign up. Now we go to our browser. I have used everything. I hope this router will work successfully in the first time.